All right, everybody. Well, it is seven o'clock, so we are going to go ahead and get started tonight. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us for our uh, session on living and dining on campus. Uh, my name is Dr. Angie Royal, and I serve as the Vice President for Student Experience here at Culver. And we're very happy to have you here with us tonight to learn a little bit more about your students' experience living on campus. One thing I will ask, if, if not already, I did try to go through and mute those that I could, um, but if you all would uh, mute yourselves, um, we will, uh, that way we can eliminate any background noise. We are recording this session so that we can share it with those parents that were unable to, uh, to make it with us tonight. Um, so just to kind of let you know how tonight's gonna go and then I'll have Nick and Tim introduce themselves. Um, we will be you know, presenting some information to you kind of in some little you know, snippets. And uh, after each kind of chunk of information, we will stop and ask if there are questions about that particular thing that, um, that we'll be uh, covering. So you're welcome to throw questions in the chat. I'll be keeping my eye on the chat. Um, and, or you're also welcome once we do you know, ask for questions to unmute yourself um, and, and ask a question. So please know that we absolutely will have time for questions. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot to cover tonight. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So first I'm gonna have uh, my team introduce themselves. So Tim, do you wanna start first? Uh, my name is Tim Williams. I'm the interim Dean of, dean of Student Life. Uh, what that means, I oversee housing and residential life. Um, I also go ahead and oversee our Greek Greek life, um, our career services, our counseling and wellness, and all. And like I said, work integrally uh, sure. with Mr. Frank uh, on uh, residential life. Awesome, thank you, Tim. And Nick, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep, uh, I'm Nick Frank. Uh, I originally got here in August as a, a graduate assistant football coach. Uh, I slowly worked my way up to being the coordinator of Res Life um, in April. Uh, while also doing football, and I kind of look over, oversee all the housing stuff. Um, also, RAs, RDs, I kind of help train them and stuff, but yeah. Awesome. So uh, again, if you're jumping on the call, if you wouldn't mind, please mute yourself so we can reduce any background noise. We'll go ahead and we'll get started. So the first thing that we thought would be important for you to know, because it's what we're working on right now, is how we assign your students rooms. So Nick is gonna go through and he's gonna cover how we do room assignments, what that looks like. And uh, like I said, when we get finished with that, we'll pause uh, for questions before we move on to the next topic. So Nick, go ahead and take it away. All righty, thank you. Um, so kind of how we start off, uh, we base it off of uh, Form Bs. Um, your students will fill out Form B forms that ask a number of questions on there. Um, and basically we kind of, you know, they can also request roommates on there. So if them and another student decide to request themselves, themselves, excuse me, we'll put them together. Um, and then after that, it kind of comes down to, or excuse me, I'm sorry. Before that, it comes down to first come, first serve, basically, basis. Um, so basically, if you had a student, your student filled out their application in October, they'll, uh, you know, they'll have, like, we'll put them in first compared to someone that filled out in May um, or applied in May. So, um, but how we do, we base it off of, you know, trying to fit them together um, off the series of questions. Um, myself and the Res Life staff do that. Um, we'll spend the whole month of June doing that. Um, and then the assignments themselves will come out on July 1st to figure out who your roommate is, uh, where you're staying. I believe you get also what room number you're also in. Um, we, part, we really encourage you guys uh, or excuse me, encourage the students to get connected with their roommates. That way you move on August, on moving day in August, it's not really awkward when you guys first get in there. Um, but then you also kind of work things out, like who's gonna bring the fridge, who's gonna bring the microwave, that way you guys aren't doubling up on anything. Um, I remember my sophomore year in college, none of my roommates and us could, you know, got with each other and contact each other about that. So we ended up having four microwaves in one room. So, um, but yeah, we kind of, we are highly encourage you guys to get in contact. All right. So um, does anybody have any questions for Nick on how we house students or what that looks like? Just curious how the student is notified of their roommate so that they can reach out. 
So I believe they should get an uh, email and they'll be able to access. I think, I believe they get a link in their email to access on Mike Hover. Um, you go to our Mike Hover account or you can go to your Mike Hover account in Campus Live. Um, it should all be up there. I have their information, I have their number, their email, uh, basically all the contact information um, on there. So, which, which dorms are the freshman dorms? Uh, normally, the freshman dorms are Sperry Hall and Wood Hall. Which one's Sperry? It uh, used to be Shannon Hall. Yeah. Oh. It was renamed to Sperry. So the old Culver Hall, the girls, is not girls anymore? I'm not, I'm, I'm we're all, we're all new. I'm the veteran here and I've only been here two years. Um, so I'm not aware of a building named Culver Hall. So. Well, it's the one right next to the, the student center. That's Johnson Hall. That's right next to the student center. Johnson, okay. Okay, so we've had a few questions come in the chat. Uh, the first one, is there a checklist of what we need to bring for the dorm room? Yes, we will have that for you. Nick's also gonna cover that, uh, what to bring and what not to bring in uh, later on this evening. Um, Jody's asking, will they get their room assignments on move-in day? No, uh, like Nick mentioned on July 1, uh, room assignments will be available in my Culver. So when they go into my Culver, they on July 1, they will be able to see um, where they're living and who they're living with. Um, and then are they co-ed? Yes, uh, our halls are co-ed by floor. Um, so typically, but again, this all depends on occupancy. So we won't know this for certain until we get everybody housed. But typically Wood Hall is uh, two floors of females and one floor of males. And Sperry Hall is the opposite. It's two floors of males and one floor of females. Any other questions on housing assignments and how we how we house your student? All right, Nick, do you want to share with them about room consolidation and you know what happens if they move into a room and there's not a roommate in the room? Uh, yeah, so if you, they're moving to a room and uh, there's not a roommate, um, it does mean they get the room by themselves. Um, normally, we try to find, uh, or excuse me, normally either someone will end up coming in, whether that might be not until the spring semester, maybe the middle semester. Um, that'll come in and basically, you know, have to move in because we need the space or whatever. So, um, but yeah. Yeah. So, so in, a, you know, kind of just to keep this in mind, uh, you know, if your student calls and says, hey, I lucked out. My roommate didn't show up. Um, not really. <laughs> we do what's called room consolidation. And so what that means is, you know, residents who live in rooms without roommates are going to have three options. They can either find a roommate, we will find a roommate for them, or if we have space available, they can pay to, to remain in that room uh, and keep it a single room. But that's only if we have space available. So, you know, please let your student know, you know, don't get super comfortable um, if, uh, you know, if your roommate doesn't show and don't, you know, have the beds all together and think that you're going to have this big giant king bed um, for, for the semester. Odds are due to consolidation, they will get, they will get a roommate. Okay, um, question. My daughter had her roommate picked by her coach. Does she need to do anything further in regards to room selection? Nick, you want to go ahead and answer that? Uh, yeah, so. Um, how we go off of, so on their form B's that I mentioned earlier, um, they can request roommates and as long as both of them request on there, um, they request each other, we'll put them together. Um, the next thing I usually look at is coaches list. So if the coaches has like kind of an idea they want a room together, I'll shoot an email out to both of them to make sure like, hey, are you both okay, you know, team, uh, room with each other. Um, and if so, then I'll go ahead and put them together. All right, so um, let's go ahead and move on to room changes. So Nick, why don't you talk to the parents about, you know, what room changes look like around here? Um, so room changes uh, usually won't be made, like say, uh, unless, not unless, but, you know, if your son or daughter comes to me the first week and like, I hate my roommate, they smell or whatever. Um, you know, usually we won't change it drastically that fast unless there's, um, you know, uh, how to say physical harm, I guess, 
or you know someone's in danger not physical i'm sorry um someone's in you know danger or whatever um so uh, but then normally we don't change it super soon or right away we try to give it a semester to let you guys or to let them try to you know uh work it out so to say and you know today's today's i'm part of this generation today's generation all they want to do is snapchat each other like you, know, blah, 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 blah. you need to do this better or whatever you, know, you need to pick up your dirty underwear or whatever uh, but you know we try to we're going to try to tell them like hey you guys actually need to speak about it to each other um see if, you know if it can get resolved and if it can then after the semester we'll look to room changes um but um if they are moving uh excuse me if they are moving for the spring semester they will need to if they're moving rooms excuse me um they'll need to make sure they clean their side of the room get all their items out of the room and then they'll have to turn in their keys before leaving um that room as well so yeah, don't and you, don't you think a semester is a little late if there's a problem? So it's at, it's not actually at semester. Um, it is, you know, usually we make them stay for, uh, we don't do any, we try not to do any room changes until week three or four in the semester. Uh, there's a whole process that, that we have students go through. One is, like Nick said, again, you know, having them uh, try and discuss it with their roommate, you know, whatever the issues are. Our RAs, which uh, Tim's going to talk to you all about uh, later in our session tonight, um, they are trained to do mediations with roommates to try and resolve the conflict. What we typically find is if we can get people to sit down and talk about it, the conflict is resolved. But like Nick mentioned, what this generation wants to do is they want to Snapchat each other and text each other. And those can be completely misinterpreted. Uh, I actually had a student in my office who was telling me about a roommate issue. And I'm like, well, did you did you speak to her? And she's like, yeah. And she turned her phone around and showed me her Snapchat messages. And so I read them back to her in, in a bunch of different tones. And she was like, oh, but I didn't mean it that way. I said, see, that's the problem with texting is people can insert their own tone and meaning into it. So, so that's why we encourage conversations. And if after we have exhausted all of our mediation efforts with someone, if they're still is an issue, you know, that third week or so, then we will start to explore room changes. But like Nick mentioned, I mean, if, it, if somebody's safety is at risk, then obviously we're not gonna make them go through mediation. We will make immediate changes. Um, a couple of questions came into the chat. Uh, my son is going to Culver and will be playing football. I know he requested to possibly have a roommate that is on the football team. Do those requests usually get granted? Nick, do you wanna answer that? Uh, yes, they, yes, they usually do. Um, if they request each other, I'm not sure if that was the question or not. Um, I'm looking at it right now. Um, as long as they request each other, they will. But if they have in their form B, hey, I'd, I'd like to room with a football player. I play football. Um, you know, 99 out of 100 times, we're going to make that sure that works out. Yeah, and for <laughs> football especially, we do try and house them together. Um, no matter what, because one, they are here early and we don't want anybody, you know, living in a room by themselves from August 5th on, but two, more importantly, they have some very, very early practices. And so it can cause some tension, uh, between people when you have a non-football player in a room with a football player, because they're up banging around at, you know, four 30 in the morning. So we do really try to, to house football players, especially together. Um, the next question that came in the chat, when will you be sending the email to the girls based off the coaches requested list? Uh, it'll be sometime this week is my plan. Yeah, we are in the process of housing students right now. So, um, you know, and it, it because we are actually, you know, looking to see, you know, who's who are good fits for people and such. It, it's a it can be a timely process. So, you know, as soon as is Nick has those uh, those uh, athletes housed with each other off the coach's requested list, uh, he'll definitely, you know, uh, he can get information out to them. But if nothing else, July 1, they'll be able to go out on my Culver and to see who they're living with uh, and where they're living. And uh, the other thing I just wanted to stress, um, if your um, student is moving rooms uh, at the end of fall semester, so for example, students who join a fraternity or sorority, they are able to move into the fraternity or sorority house uh, in the um, spring semester. Um, so if that is the case, they will have to completely move their items out of the room uh, when they go home for winter break. 
Um, if your student is, you know, travel, you know, they're an international student or traveling a distance and that's not possible, have them, you know, or they don't have a plate, you know, like to take their items with them. They need to work with student life because we do need to have those items out of the room so that we can get the room cleaned and any damages repaired before someone moves in there for the spring. Um, when we don't have students do that, um, it's a hot mess in the spring waiting for people to move out of rooms into other spaces, and it can be very frustrating for all students involved. So this year we have made the decision um, that, you know, we do need to ask that if you're moving in the spring semester to go ahead and remove your items from your room. Uh, we got another question. If the, if the student is in a room with three, does that lower the fee? No, uh, that does not lower the fee. Um, we aren't cramming three people in a double room. We actually have rooms that are designated as triples, quads. We even have six people rooms. Um, and so no, um, those are larger spaces and no, there is no reduction in the fee. Okay, uh, we're gonna move on and we can come back to questions too. Um, Tim, do you want to share with the uh, with the parents tonight about the staff that we have uh, in our halls that are trained to deal with some of these issues that have already been asked about tonight? We uh, we have RAs, which are student uh, kind of student educators. Uh, it's always good to have peers there who can kind of diffuse things or go ahead and have a peer there to talk to. Um, we also have what we call RDs. Uh, these are resident directors that are hall directors, um, usually bachelor degree. Uh, individuals who have been trained specifically and how to direct a hall, um, how to go ahead and, and conflict, can't manage conflicts, how to go ahead and handle, you know, roommate issues. Um, then up there after RDs, we have uh, Mr. Frank and then myself. Um, I live right up the street. Mr. Frank lives uh, on campus. So when we do have emergencies and so forth, we're able to go ahead and rapidly respond with the help of public safety, our public safety uh, office here on campus. All right. Um, so Nick, do you want to share with everybody what students can and can't bring to campus? Um, especially, you know, the the highlights of <laughs> of those those things they, they they can and can't bring. Yeah, I can. Um, so we'll start with the can'ts, I guess. Uh, so big cans, uh, cinder blocks. We don't allow cinder blocks in rooms. Um, air fryers, um, air fry fryers are not allowed. Um, light strips, especially if you're going to put them on the wall. Light strips, especially not because it rips down the wall, uh, the paint off the wall. We charge a minimum. I believe the minimum is $125. Um, so uh, just kind of stuff like that. Basically anything other than a microwave that you can burn anything down with <laughs> uh, is, uh, you know, frowned upon. Um, uh, some ideas of stuff that you can bring. You can bring a mini fridge. Um, see where there's mini, you can't bring a whole big old fridge. Um, it's got to be a mini fridge. Uh, microwaves, um, stuff that you'll need for the room, like bedding wise, the, the sheets are twin XL. Um, so, I mean, I know I, my mom, when I went to college, was writing that down right away. So, make sure you guys get the right sheets. Um, but if not, like there's a list when you when your student will get their roommate assignment. There's a list on uh, Mike Over. Um, under that list, uh, it's under Campus Life, I believe. Um, it'll have like what you should bring and what you shouldn't bring uh, on that list. If you guys need any more references for that. Yeah, and we will we'll also send that information out to you as well. Um, but if your student has any questions about whether or not you know, they can bring something rather than, you know, risking it and bringing it and then us having to confiscate it. Um, you know, just have them contact Nick. I'm going to actually put his email address in the chat um, so that you have that. And, you know, I would, I would ask rather than hauling something all the way here, uh, every closing we go through and when we do our closing procedures and we check rooms, we are forever confiscating uh, unauthorized items like candles. Um, here's another thing, because I know that while most of your new students are not 21, um, sometimes they might, you know, get a champagne bottle for graduation and they want to bring that champagne bottle as a decoration for their room. That is a no-no. Um, you know, in our freshman halls, no alcohol is allowed, whether it's in an empty bottle or in a full bottle. 
Uh, even if a student is 21 living in our freshman halls, they cannot have alcohol in those halls. So please make certain, you know, your decorative fireball lights um, stay at stay at home. Um, but yeah, the big things are the fire safety issues like candles uh, and anything with a with a burner, um, you know, that that you can touch. So air fryers, no pizzazz. That's a big one that we uh, have to have to confiscate because you can actually a, a good rule of thumb is when you can touch the burner of something, it's a no no. Um, but again, if you're unsure, just please make certain that you ask. Uh, we got asked if they could have a diffuser. Um, I assume you're meaning like a plug-in, um, sensi kind of kind of thing. Is if you're referring to that, um, those um, uh, sense sensi kinds of of things um, are okay uh, to have in the in the residence halls. Are the beds lofted or how can they be lofted? Beds cannot be lofted. Uh, unfortunately, we do not allow for beds to be lofted. You can purchase bed risers off of Amazon. Um, and we can certainly, uh, in our information that goes out about, um, you know, with our res life information, we can include maybe some suggestions on that. Um, but uh, no, no. And that when, when Nick mentioned the cinder blocks, that's what he was referring to. Sometimes students will haul in cinder blocks to stack under their bed and that is a no-no. Um, question is no need to bring a dresser or any type of furniture. Nope, um, we've got beds, desks, dressers, chairs uh, within the rooms. Um, they cannot bring large furniture. So please tell them, keep your couches at home. Um, those don't need to be, because here's the thing, you have to keep the furniture that's already in the room, in the room. So there's not room for large furniture uh, within the room. Um, so please make certain that that, that, that does uh, stay at home. Yeah. Um, there was a question about candle warmers. Um, yes, I believe that candle warmers are fine um, because again, there's not an open flame um, and there's not an open burner. It's typically through a light bulb. So they should be, they should be fine. Um, what about an area rug? Is there room for that? Absolutely. A lot of our students do bring area rugs, especially if they're living in Sperry um, or Weldon. Those are tiled floors. Um, so an area rug is nice for that. Um, but in wood, it is carpeted, but you're, I mean, you're still welcome to, if you want to put an area rug over the carpet, you're welcome to. Um, so yes, that is allowed. Um, are there any other questions about what you can and can't bring before we move on to like the measurements of the room and um, things like that? All right, Nick, do you wanna share with the parents uh, about how they can find out um, uh, the measurements of a room? Yeah, so when uh, the room assignments come out July 1st, uh, under the room assignments, uh, there should be a link that in uh, my folder that will allow you to like see the measurements of the room. Um, if there's not a link, you can get in contact with me. I'll go over there and measure it myself um, if I have to. Um, but yes, yeah, so there should be a link under what when you guys, when the students receive their roommates on July 1st. Awesome. Got a couple other questions that came into the chat. Can they have adjustable shelving? Um, as long as you are not mounting anything to the wall, um, that would be okay. So if it's a freestanding shelf, that's okay. It just can't be mounted to the wall. How about TVs? Yes, you can have a TV again. You can't mount it to the wall. Um, so, you know, if you're going to have a TV on a stand, um, that's okay. And, and most students do have a TV within their room. Please know, though, that we do have within the lounge areas, we do have TVs uh, in the lounges. Um, there's a question, is there a community kitchen down the hall? Uh, Wood Hall does have a community kitchen. Uh, Sperry Hall does not. Um, but our Sperry Hall residents are welcome to go over and use the kitchen in Wood Hall if they'd like to. Uh, do you know the open measurements for under the bed? That is something that we're going to have to uh, probably measure. Uh, I don't know how, how tall our standard beds are. So Nick, if you'll make a note uh, so we can measure that, um, we'll get on that. Um, with regard to storage for clothes and stuff, how large are the dressers and are the students allowed to bring any storage containers and store items in as well? Many do. Uh, a lot of students do like to bring the, um, you know, the flat, the long flat storage things that slide under the bed. Um, you know, for students who live within driving distance and who are going to be coming home, 
uh, you know, here and there, I would say don't bring your entire year's wardrobe with you uh, if, if you don't have to. But it, for those students who are coming from far away, which we know are many of our students, um, yes, you can absolutely have storage containers. Um, the dressers, they vary from hall to hall, but I mean, they're, they're typically at least, uh, each dresser at least has three or four nice size drawers in it. Um, and then they have closet space as well, whether it's an actual closet or an armoire uh, in each room and for each side of the room. So there, there's typically plenty of, of storage for, um, for, for clothes. I got another question, how many TVs can be in the rooms? Um, that's up to your student and their roommate. Um, you know, the rooms aren't massive. So the more stuff that's in the room, the less space they have to, uh, you know, to, to live. So, um, you know, we always recommend that they work with their roommate to determine who's going to bring a TV. But I have seen in rooms where two, um, two roommates each have a TV. Uh, there's a question about the bathrooms for both Wood and Sperry. They are community bathrooms. Um, so it is um, the bathrooms kind of split where in one half of the bathroom, it's the, the toilet stall area. And then the other half of the bedroom are showers. Um, there are separate showers, um, usually on each floor. I'm trying to envision the showers right now. There's a good, Tim, what would you say? Six at least showers in each bathroom, I want to say. That would be correct. Six, okay. Six, six, six. Um, so, yeah. Um, what is storage like in a three-person room, a dresser and closet for each? Yes. Uh, for laundry, are the machines point operated and where they located? Nick's going to cover that in, in a little bit. All right. So, Tim, do you want to talk to the parents about renter's insurance and charges for damages and things like that? Yes, I'll go ahead and definitely recommend, you know, when you're moving in to have renter's insurance, uh, this is to go ahead and just cover your belongings. Um, also, the other thing, and this is going to get, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, is charges for damages. Um, we have an RCR system where we go ahead and we check the rooms before you go ahead and you move in. Then we go ahead and compare that with when, when you move out. Um, any kind of damages, any kind of differences between the two would result in a charge. Like, if, you know, we just spoke about, I believe, a, a, something with, uh, dealing with the wall, about that, you know, the minimum of that would be in $125. Uh, so if there, are, if there are damages to the room, we do charge for that. Um, typically, though, you know, most of our students go ahead and do take care of the room. So, you know, I don't foresee that being an issue, but... That's just something that parents, you know, sometimes people like right now, we're going through rooms right now and, you know, we're generating bills for people that have damaged rooms and there's been quite, well, what do you mean? Why, you know, why is this on the account? Well, that's because there was damage between, you know, there's a difference between that first RCR and when they checked out and, you know, there's a hole in the wall or maybe a ceiling tile has been damaged. Yeah, and so um, just to clarify further, uh, Tim mentioned the RCR, that's a room condition report. So when your student moves in, their RA will have already done a room condition report that they will go over with the student and the student will sign off on it that they agree that, you know, this is what the room looked like when, when I got here. Um, that way there's no question, you know, about when the, you know, when the damage might have occurred. Now I got a question in the chat. If the other roommate causes the damage, do both have to pay? Um, if we cannot determine who caused the damages, then yes, um, they both pay. Um, but uh, typically it's, it's obvious which side it's on or, you know, what we find is typically, you know, the other roommate isn't going to, isn't going to blame the person you know that didn't do it they're usually pretty good about taking responsibility for it but what we do ask is that you know to, to kind of alleviate this what your student needs to remember to do if their roommate does cause damage they need to make certain that that's reported um so you know i would say to make certain that they report to the ra that hey you know my roommate has you know hung something up on the wall and i don't want to be you know i don't want to be charged for it Waiting until after the charges have been, you know, assessed to then suddenly claim that it wasn't theirs, that that causes some issues. So as soon as they see that their roommate has has caused damages, they probably should go ahead and report that to their to their RA. Uh, there is a question. How do they hang things on the wall? Um, nothing that, you know, will permanently affix things to the wall. They are welcome to use. Um, they can use um, like the three the uh, the what is that called? 
um, the 3M uh, adhesive uh, things. They can use that mm -hmm. on the walls. They can use, there's poster putty, um, but they cannot uh, hang things, um, you know, that are going to leave, you know, substantial holes in the wall. So, you know, that's why we said they can't hang shelves. They can't hang TVs. Um, it is, you know, just, you know, if there's a thumbtack hole, you know, that that's, that's not that big of a deal. But, you know, when we have, you know, major holes in the wall from nailing things up that that can result in a charge. Um, uh, but what they need to make certain they do is, you know, one of the things you got to watch with 3M, if you just rip it off the wall, it's going to take the paint off with it. So you have to carefully remove those things. So, um, and again, to clarify, do not Don't have your student the bring the, um, do not have your student bring the LED light strips that stick to the wall. Um, I wish I had a picture to show you of a room that uh, I was in last year where every single corner of the entire room, I and mean, we had to redo the whole room because of the damage that that tape from those LED lights do. So no LED lights that adhere to, to the wall. Um, there is a question about, will there be an AC unit so they can change the temperature when needed? So um, there's kind of two different systems um, in Sperry. They have what are called the DICON units. Um, and uh, those units, they do have um, some control over the temperature uh, in the rooms with those. Uh, in Woodhall, they are not on the DICON system. They're on our double boiler system. Um, and so um, that they cannot control the temperature, unfortunately. They'll be able to turn the fans on and off or you know, low and high. I, I can't remember exactly what it is in that hall, but. Uh, they will have less of an ability to control the temperature. I will say this though, friends, one of the downsides of living in the Midwest is that temperatures are very, very volatile. Um, and so what facilities does in, in conjunction with Res Life is they monitor the temperatures to see, you know, if we're gonna have consistent low temperatures below a certain amount, we do have to make the decision, usually in October, to turn the AC off. But we had a situation last year where, you know, it was cold for three weeks and then unexpectedly we had a weekend where it was 86 degrees um, and it was not anticipated. We can't, it's not like a house. We can't just flip AC on and off. So it is, you know, it is possible that there might be a night that, that students are a little warm. Um, so we, we just try and give them tips on how they can make it, you know, bearable, but unfortunately we cannot turn the AC on and off, uh, like you can within your, within your homes. Can they bring their own fans? Absolutely. And I would encourage them to, um, you know, I, I'm somebody that sleeps with a fan anyway, but, um, yes, they are more than welcome to bring their own fans. What they cannot bring though are space heaters. Um, that's not allowed. Um, you know, they can't bring a window AC unit. They can't bring portable AC units. Those uh, are not allowed in the hall. Um, and one thing I did want to point out, the reason Tim mentioned the renter's insurance, um, just so everybody's clear, Culver Stockton College is not responsible for the loss, damage, or theft of any property in the residence halls, any personal property, and that is within the housing contract. So please make certain that your students' items, you know, are either covered under your, uh, your own homeowner's insurance. You can ask your agent about that. Sometimes policy, homeowner's policies will cover um, dorm room items uh, or renter's insurance. And renter's insurance is really, really inexpensive. You can usually find renter's insurance for about 10 bucks uh, a month. Um, let's see. Um, Tim, do you want to uh, now talk about um, move-in days? And I'm actually going to share my screen so that I can pull those up for you too. Thank you. Okay, well that did not work. Okay, hopefully, can you see the move-in dates now? Awesome. All right, Tim, do you wanna go through, um, through move-in dates? Uh, yes, um, August 5th is gonna be our first move-in date. Um, that would be at the Field House. Um, nine to 12, it would be Catalyst and football from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, from one to 4 p.m., 
uh, would be our fall sports, men's and women's cross country, men's and women's soccer, women's volleyball. And then our, we, because our dining hall is staffed by students as well, um, those dining hall student workers will be able to move in as well uh, on the 5th. Uh, on the 11th, uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. or till noon in Metters, uh, which is over here across the, across the way from the Student Life Office, uh, marching band can go ahead and move in. Uh, on, the on the 17th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., that would be new residential students. And then from 1 to 2 p.m. would be new commuter students. Um, both of these will be in the field house on the 17th and August 20th. We have 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, returning residential students and commuters. That would usually would not be, a, you know, your sons and daughters here because, you know, freshmen will be here um, as new residential students on the, on the 17th. Um, all new students must be here on the 17th through the required activities that start occurring that day. What we're trying to do, we're not trying to go ahead and, and tell anybody what to do, but we have activities going on that are going to help your son or daughter go ahead and be successful in college. It's a large adjustment going from high school to college. And then you kind of double that if somebody is an athlete going from a high school athlete to a college athlete. Um, so we want to go ahead. We're going to have activities that are going to go ahead and be beneficial to them. And it also helps them go ahead and kind of bond with their freshman class so they have some other people to kind of hang out with and to go ahead and meet. Um, and like I said, on the 20th at the Maybe Center from 10 to 1, that'll be ret uh, returning students. Um, what I would also do that day before you go ahead and you, when you're checking in, get is done get done as, as much as possible. And what I mean by that, have your immunizations, have your financial aid done, have your student accounts, try to get as much done as possible. Um, what that does is that that's gonna be the less that you have to do, and then you can go ahead and focus on moving your son or daughter in. Um, so, you know, go ahead and take care of those things. We will also have volunteers to assist with the move on August 5th and the 17th. Um, students requesting to move outside their scheduled move-in day must submit a request for, re for approval. Um, only extenuating circumstances will be, uh, will be considered and the form will not be available until July 3rd. Um, it must be submitted no, le no less than one week prior to the request move-in date. And what that is, is we've got, we wanna make sure that you've got food and everything is ready to go for you to go ahead and move in. So like, you know, if, you're, if that's gonna be the case, then please go ahead and request, if you're gonna to request to move in early, um, that form will be available on July 3rd. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing because it won't let me see the, <laughs> see the chat when I'm sharing. So uh, some more questions have come into the chat. Um, how are the dorm rooms locked? Um, so for the, the, the dorm rooms, they, there is a lock on the door. All students are issued keys when they check in. Um, here's the big conversation I would encourage you to have with your student, however. Make sure they lock their doors. Uh, I am shocked by the number of students who do not lock their doors. And then they're surprised if, you know, something happens to uh, walk away. So uh, please encourage them to lock their doors. They will, um, them and their roommates will have keys to the door. Uh, if they ever lock themselves out of their rooms, the RAs can let them into their rooms. Campus safety can let them into their rooms. However, after an, you know a certain number of lockouts, then there are charges that are assessed. Um, and if they do lose their keys, there are charges that are assessed for that as well. Um, with the LED lights, can they be stuck to beds underneath to light it up? Um, it would depend how it's being stuck to the bed. Um, if it's going to damage the bed, um, then the student would be assessed the charge to replace the bed um, so or to repair it. So I would just be, I, it's hard for me to say yes or no, not knowing how those lights would be adhered to, uh, to the bed. Um, there's a question, what about baseball? Um, are you asking our baseball players housed together? I, I'm, I'm not certain what we're asking about baseball. If you are asking, will baseball be housed together? Um, Nick, is that a sport that the coach has provided a, recommenda a recommended list for? Yes, it is. And uh, okay. I believe they're asking for move-in day. Um, oh, gotcha. Move-in day for baseball will be August 17th. 
Yeah. So for any of the sports that were not listed um, on that flyer, so anything other than football, um, men's and women's soccer, women's vo women's volleyball, and men's and women's cross country, all other sports will move in on August the 17th. Only those sports mentioned will move in on August the 5th. Okay. Is it a key card or an actual key? It is an actual key. Um, is registration for classes a different day than move in? Yes. Um, so we have been hosting registration days throughout the summer. We've got one more on uh, June 23rd. I think it's the next one. Um, but it, but many of our students are, are from a ways away. So students who are not able to come to a registration day will be contacted about distance registration. Um, so they will, they will be registered for classes before they move into campus on move-in day. Um, and uh, Tim, you wanted to talk about keys? There'll be two keys that your uh, son or daughter will receive. This one right here is a mail key. Uh, the replacement fee for this is about $15. Uh, this is the room key. Uh, the room key is a little more expensive. We're probably looking at about $75 to go ahead and replace this. They're um, actually so 100. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so this, these are the two keys that you will go ahead and get. So there'll be a mail key uh, for the uh, down in Johnson and then also a room key. All right, so Nick, we covered uh, RCRs. So I'm gonna jump over to uh, Wildcat Welcome. So like, uh, like Tim mentioned, um, for our new students, them moving in and being here by August 17th is critical um, because we do have a number of activities for them, some that are required, some that are optional, but they are all intentional activities meant to set them up for success uh, as a new student. Um, you know, also what we don't want to happen is, you know, let's say August 17th is move in and your student, you know, says, well, I'm just going to move in on the 19th. You've already missed two days of bonding with other new students. And so then you come in feeling already out of place. College students uh, are already feeling uncomfortable, just the simple fact that they're coming to college. So we wanna make certain we get them all moved in on the same day and that we start getting them interacting with each other and doing some different activities that will help set them up for success. So when they move in on Thursday, August 17th, that afternoon, if you are coming with them to move them in, I would recommend that you stick around for our kickoff and matriculation that is at 3 p.m. on August the 17th. It's a really cool formal ceremony that's, that gives the appearance almost of like a graduation, but it's kicking off their, their experience as a college student. Faculty and staff are in regalia. You know, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, and then we process them across campus to, matriculate, to matriculation where they actually... Um, they sign the student covenant. Um, they actually walk through Johnson Hall, which is our original building on campus. And then they go out to the fountain where our chairman of the board hands them each a penny and they get to make a wish in our fountain for, you know, whatever they're wishing their college experience will be like. And it's, it's just a really, it's a cool ceremony. I'm a mom myself. My daughter just graduated college in December and it's definitely something that if you're gonna be here, you're gonna to wanna to see, cause it's it, It's a really cool ceremony. Um, and so then Thursday evening, we'll then have them in some required activities to get them uh, interacting with each other. Then Friday all day, we've got them in activities um, for them to learn about things like technology on campus. They're gonna be doing a scavenger hunt on campus to learn where buildings and offices are. They're gonna learn more about uh, their rights as a student, but also their responsibilities. So we're going to talk to them about the code of conduct and what happens when you have a have a misstep. Um, we're going to talk to them about, you know, what it's like in a college classroom. So they, they feel a little more confident when they start their classes on that Monday. Um, we're also going to talk to them about mental health resources on campus because uh, mental health uh, is a huge concern for college students. So we want to make certain they're armed with tools so when they are struggling, they know what to do. So these are all the kinds of things we'll be doing with them on uh, Friday the 18th. Um, yes, move-in day is the 17th, but then we will we'll have activities all day on the 18th, 19th, and 20th for them. Um, so um, uh, 
The other things that will be happening that weekend on Saturday, we have what's called EDM. That is our day of service where our new students, uh, we march out into the community and we do service projects in the community, which is really cool. Um, and then we'll have some dessert socials and some fun activities that night for them. Then on Sunday, August the, um, let's see, Sunday, August the 21st, then um, we will have um, a surviving college super high energy fun session for them uh, to learn some more about being successful as a college student. And then we have a big barbecue that night because everybody's back and then they start classes the next day. Uh, there's a question, do the Catalyst students have the same activities early or do they go through at the same time as the rest? They're actually, um, they're gonna be getting some information um, through their Catalyst program, but we actually have them go through Wildcat Welcome the August 17th through the 20th as well. Um, what time can we be at campus to move in? That, that will all be uh, shared with you. Like we said, for, for the football move in and Catalyst move in, they will move in uh, from eight to 12 on August the 5th. And then uh, the rest of those fall sports that are able to move in on the 5th will be from one to four. Uh, but on August 17th, um, that move in is just an open move in from nine to one uh, PM that day. Um, Let's see, uh, one of the things I would, I would ask that you do with your students is encourage them to go to all Wildcat Welcome activities. One, they're super fun, um, but two, it is a really good way for them to meet other new students, to feel a little more confident about starting classes on Monday, um, to get to know Culver faculty and staff as well because we're at the events uh, too. So, you know, please encourage them. Don't, don't try and pull them away on Thursday and say, hey, you don't need to go to, kick off or matriculation or meet with your FYE group, let's go to Walmart. No, let's just wait on that. Um, they really need to participate in all the activities and we'll be sending the schedule of Wildcat Welcome uh, out to all of you and your students. Um, we also have an app called Wildcats Connect that July 1st, your students will be able to download. They, they're not in the system yet, so they can download the app. They just won't be able to log into it until July 1st. Um, but that, that app will have all of these activities on it. So at their fingertips, they'll always have access to events on campus. Okay, uh, Tim, do you wanna talk about other programming that we do to address college student needs? Um, I'd like to talk about some of the programming. We specifically do some programming in residential life. Um, that programming deals with like the different dimensions of health, uh, the physical dimensions, mental dimensions, social, all those things, spiritual. Um, what we try to do is go ahead and have, you know, fun activities to where our RA is going ahead and like actually bringing campus resources or off campus resources to the residence, residence hall. Um, I would like, I would implore you to go ahead and have your son or daughter go ahead and participate in these, in these programs. Because what they do is there's the education that you get inside the classroom, but then there's also the education that you get outside the classroom that goes ahead and assists you in making you marketable or those kind of soft skills that go ahead and make it easier for you to go ahead and get a job. Um, so we do offer programming in, within the residence halls um, via our RAs and other staff members on campus. I um, also would like to go ahead and give a plug for our ACE programs. Um, we're also, you know, you have to go ahead and attend those as well. And they run the gamut of, you know, discussing political issues to, you know, resume writing. Um, so those are the things that I'll go ahead, you know, programming wise, I would implore you to go ahead and have your son or daughter participate in. Yeah, and to, to um, expand upon the ACE events, all students are required to attend 24 ACE events uh, throughout their career at Culver. Uh, if you are the parent of a college, uh, or sorry, a transfer student, um, that's prorated, um, so they won't have to cram 24 in in two years. Um, the ACE committee will let them know how many they have to complete, but uh, we, we do that for a reason. Um, you know, we do want to encourage our students. ACE stands for um, academic and cultural events. Um, so we do want to, as a liberal arts college, we do want to expose our students to, um, to some cultural things um, like fine arts and such. And then also like Tim mentioned, you know, we might have political debates and things like that. So um, those are things that they will have to complete before they graduate. Um, Nick, let's go ahead now and have you talk about laundry, parking, and work orders. All right, so we'll first start with laundry. Um, every dorm on campus has free, free laundry for, uh, uh, for everybody who has washers, dryers, so no coins or anything or anything like that. 
Um, each dorm usually has at least two washers and two dryers. I believe Sperry and Wood both have three apiece. Um, and so, like I, like I mentioned, it's free and no extra charge for you guys um, or your students. Um, parking on campus, um, if your student's going to have a vehicle on campus, they have to register their vehicle. Um, they can do that through the Mike Over website. They can go under Campus Live. There'll be a tab called Register Your Vehicle. They'll click on it, register it. And then when they get here on campus, they'll have to stop by Campus Safety, um, up by Student Life, pick up their uh, tag, put it on their car. And then with when they do that, they'll get a, a sheet or a paper, a map, so to say, to show which areas they can park in um, and which areas that they shouldn't park in. Um, and the registration for the vehicle is $75 a year. It's for every year. Um, and I would highly encourage your uh, students to do that because uh, tickets are, I believe, $40 a piece, depending on where you park. Some, sometimes it could be more. Um, so if you decide to park, your student decides to park two days in a row in the wrong spot, that's already $80 and you're already paying more than you would have for registered your vehicle. Um, work orders. Um, work order students can go on their my cover. Um, and put in a work order for uh, something in their room, whether it's damage um, that was done previously or damage that you know they could have done. Um, um, if they don't, if they can't figure out how to do it, they, they can go to their RAs and their RAs should know how to do it. Um, their RAs can put a work order for them um, and submit it on my Um the There's a question, when will the car registration link be live? Typically everything goes live on my Culver, usually at July 1. Um, so that's probably when that when that parking uh, link will be available. Um, I just want to talk briefly about um, emotional support animals, service animals, and accommodations uh, for students with disabilities. Um, whether it is that your student needs an accommodation in housing for a disability, whether they need accommodations in the classroom for a disability, whether they are requesting to have an ESA on campus, everything needs to start with disability services. Um, so they need to they need to start there first. Um, I would also say um, do not assume that things are going to be approved. And what I mean by that is we have had students go out and buy a puppy and then assume that it's going to be approved as an as a serve as a, an emotional support animal, and then it doesn't get approved. And now we've got a puppy that has to uh, be taken somewhere. So please make certain your students do abide by the process. Um, start with disability services. Um, they can, and I'll throw into the chat, um, uh, Jeannie Johnson is our disability services coordinator. So I'm putting her email in the chat. Um, and, um, she will give them the proper um, paperwork that must be completed by either the doctor um, or the mental health uh, professional for emotional support animals. She will also work with the student on what, what documentation she might need if your student had an IEP or other accommodations in the classroom. She will work with the student on all of that. Uh, as far as an ADA accommodation for a single room, please know that those uh, accommodations are only uh, granted if there is space available. So we can't uh, guarantee that we will have enough single spaces for people with an ADA request. We will try our best, um, but what we often will have to do because we've seen an explosion in those is we then have to keep a wait list. And once a space frees up, then we can move uh, the student into, uh, into that space. So. But the big thing to remember is just everything has to start with disability services with Jeannie Johnson, and she will walk them through what the what the next steps are. Um, Tim, you already kind of talked about safety in the halls with campus safety and with and with RDs, but do you want to talk to the parents real quick about uh, what our process is when we need to enter a room? Sorry about that. Uh, yes, yeah, so I want to go ahead and talk about how we enter rooms. Um, according to our housing contract, we are allowed to enter rooms for health and safety inspections and for, you know what I mean, if there is imminent danger. Uh, but we always announce uh, there's a knock, you know, knock, knock, announce, I'm keying in. Um, but th like I said, that's not something that we go ahead and we do unless it's, it's necessary and it's a health and safety inspection. Uh, health and safety inspections generally run every month, once a month. Um, and what we do, 
RD and uh, the coordinator of residence life. In some cases, I've gone ahead and gone on them as well, depending on what we're our staff. And we go ahead and we check for the air fryers for damage to the room, those kind of things. Um, actually, though, to clarify, I mean, we, we do have reason to enter rooms other than just a health and safety inspection. Um, you know, if um, if there is a maintenance issue in the room, uh, you know, where a student or an RA is put in a work order, obviously they're going to need to come in. So again, you know, they knock, announce themselves, give the student a chance to uh, come answer the door. And then if they don't answer, knock again and then say they're keying in. But also, if we have reason to believe that they may be violating any, not just campus policy, but breaking the law. Um, so for example, if we smell the odor of marijuana coming from the room, um, despite marijuana being legal as a recreational drug in Missouri, because we are a college campus that receives federal financial aid funds for our students, we cannot have marijuana or any other drugs on campus. Even if the student has a medical card, they cannot have, have uh, drugs on campus. Um, so if we do smell that, um, we do have the right to enter the room um, to, uh, to check to see what's going on in there. But again, you know, we try not to make, you know, we're not just randomly going into rooms regularly. There, there typically is a reason for that. Um, we do also, uh, just to put this on your radar though, we do also have a noxious odor policy. So if we smell marijuana coming from a room and uh, even if we can't, you know, we can't see it, um, the student can still receive a noxious odor policy violation, uh, which is a violation of our code of conduct. And there are sanctions that go with that. So please make certain your kiddos know no marijuana or other, or other drugs uh, on campus. I see. Go ahead, Tim. So, um, yeah. Also, what I what we look at is reasonable suspicion. Um, like like Dr. Uh, Dr. Royal was talking about. If we go ahead and go into a uh, go into a hallway and we smell marijuana coming from a room. Well, that's a violation of noxious odor. But then that also opens up for us to be able to knock on the door and you know announce ourselves and enter the room because that's reasonable suspicion. Uh, you know, we have to check and see what's going on because it's, we already know there's a, vi a policy possible. possible policy violation there going on in the room. Okay, um, just a few more things. We're, we're going to try and wrap up. We, we knew we had a ton to try and cram into this into this hour tonight. Um, please know that we typically, uh, our residence halls uh, are closed over breaks. However, um, there are oftentimes reasons that students must stay on campus, whether it's for a sport, whether it's for student teaching internship, um, we do have a form that students must fill out when they are requesting to stay over a break. So please just make certain if your student is remaining, even if they, you know, say have to stay, because one thing I do know is that, for example, for basketball, um, they're here for a lot of Christmas break. Even though they're required to be here, we still need for them to submit the form. We have to have record of who's on campus at any time for safety reasons. So they will need to, to fill out that form. Um, and um, I'm going to buzz through these last things real quick, friends, um, just so we can we can wrap this up. Um, just so you know, to choose your student will choose their room in the spring through what's called room draw. They will actually get to choose where they live and who they live with. As long as they uh, do not have an outstanding bill and are registered for classes uh, for the fall semester, they'll be free to do room draw. We usually do that in around late March, usually late March, early April. Um, the last thing I want to talk about real quickly is just dining, and then we'll see if you all have any final questions for us. Um, all residential students are required to have a meal plan. They start off with meal plan A, um, which gives them the most meals per week. Um, and um, then there are other options. Uh, if you go out to the Culver website and you uh, just search meal plans, we did get those meal plan uh, options and prices updated today. Um, so if you've gone out before, then you might not, you might not see it. Um, but um, actually, and I need to jump out there to make, I know they were, I know they, they were changing it today. I just realized I'm like, did they have me proof that? Um, so it may not be posted just yet. If not, it'll be there um, tomorrow, but um, they have through the first two weeks of the semester to change their meal plan. So, you know, if they start with meal plan A and they're like, yeah, you know, I don't really need 19 meals per week. I could bump down. They will have the ability to go into my Culver and make changes to that. 
Um, I believe that they can already make those changes. I did ask Tammy Ellison, our director of IT, to make that option available early now that we have new payment plan options that start earlier. So she was going to have that ready today. So um, all that your student will do will be to go out to my Culver. It's under Campus Life. They will see where it says meal plans, and then there's an option to change their meal plan. And again, they have through the first two weeks of the semester, each semester to make those changes. If your student has a dietary restriction um, or a religious uh, observance that, that you, know, you believe will um, warrant a potential exemption from a meal plan, just have them email me and I can start that, I can start that process with them. I just threw my email into the chat. Um, and um, yeah, dining on campus, we have the dining hall, which is an all you can eat option. Um, and there are specific dining hours for that. Usually the latest that dinner goes in the dining hall is around seven, I want to say. Um, but then we also have the CP, which is a to-go place where uh, options are available through 11 o'clock at night. So if your student happens to have a late practice and can't get to the all you can eat dining hall, they can order from the CP using their meal plan. Uh, we also do have the lab, which is a coffee shop on campus. Those are very limited hours. Usually it's just between like 8 and 3.30 each day that have wraps and bagels and things like that, but they can use their meal plans for, for that. Um, yeah, so uh, took us a minute over with cramming all that information in. Uh, I do see there's a question in the chat. How long do you suggest parents stay on move-in day? That's That's a tough one to answer. Now, I will say... You know, we're going to have after the kickoff at four o'clock, they're going to have a session with their FYE group. So that's usually a good time to say goodbye. However, if you're not, know that they have a required activity that night at 7 p.m. that they have to be at. So if nothing else, you're going to probably want to be uh, departing campus before that because they do have that activity that they need to be at at seven. Um, but you know, I know it's hard. Um, the longer you stay, the harder it is on them, honestly. So my recommendation would be that, you know, because you're going to have, you know, a lot of the afternoon, our kickoff doesn't start till 3 p.m. on August 17th. Um, you know, so if you move in at nine o'clock, that's a, that's a good chunk of time you have to get them settled. Uh, I would recommend after kickoff and matriculation, like I said, around four, um, you know, to depart campus or, I mean, if you want to take them to dinner, that's fine. Um, just make certain they're back on campus at seven o'clock for their required activity. Um, great question about the meal plan. The 19 meals are per week and do not roll over. That is correct. That is per week and, and those do not roll over. All right, are there any other questions um, that we can answer? Please know we're gonna be sending out information over the summer about move in, about what you can and can't bring, all of the ins and outs. We're also working on the parent and student guidebook that's gonna contain a lot of this in there. Um, so, so please know that, you know, I don't want you to feel like you have to remember everything tonight. Uh, I did get another question. Do they have activities on the fifth for move in? Yes, um, so after they move in on the fifth, um, then that evening we have a we have uh, two welcomes for athletes. Um, Catalyst uh, usually has something for them, and then usually that evening is spent with their teams doing things. Um, so we don't have any social activities per se planned that night. Um, the teams will have activities for the students on that night, and the Catalyst program will have things for them to do. All right, uh, once they move in, will they receive a schedule for everything taking place on the 17th through 20th? Yes, uh, but they will also have access to Wildcats Connect um, starting on uh, July 1st, um, the app that they'll be able to download. And again, we'll get that information out to you that, that won't just have the activities from the 17th to the 20th, but all year, all of the activities that are happening on campus, students can access via Wildcats Connect. Parents, you can also access those um, those activities as well. I'm gonna throw a website in the uh, chat um, that you can go to even now. When you go to csc.campusgroups.com, do not click login, do not try and set up a guest login. You can go up and click on groups and see the student organizations we have on campus. You can see the events we're having. We don't have a ton of them in there um, yet, but we will. Um, so you can always access that. And we'll go into that in more detail if you join us on uh, our session where we talk about getting involved uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, I got a question, can they get delivery to their dorms like Amazon? Uh, they can get delivery to the mail room. 
Um, and so we will provide to students uh, and to you as well, you know, what the mailing address looks like uh, here at Culver so they can have packages shipped here. Um, so um, we'll get that information out, but they absolutely can, can have mail delivered. They'll all get mailboxes. Uh, when they get a package delivered, we send them an email once the package is ready to be picked up. Tell them to wait for that email. Just because Amazon says it del was delivered doesn't mean that we've processed it yet. Especially at the beginning of the year, it can take us sometimes a day or two to get things processed because um, we have a huge amount of packages being delivered then. But yes, they can 100% have packages sent. What I would let them know, don't have unauthorized items sent um, to, to campus. Uh, you know, we get lots of air fryers in the mail and then we have to confiscate those right off the bat. So, um, so please tell them not to have unauthorized items. Um, I got a question. Where will this Zoom recording be? I missed the first 20 minutes. We will have the recording available. We're still working on that with our webmaster. We believe it will be on the parent and family page of the Culver website. We're just making certain that it has the, uh, that that's the best place for it. So my hope is, is that we'll have the first uh, sessions recording and this recording available by the end of the week. If you do have any further questions about living and dining on campus, you are welcome to email me. You're welcome to email Nick. We are more than happy to answer those, those questions. Um, and um, again, I'd rather you ask a ton of questions of us before you come than to come unprepared, you know, or to bring items you can't have. So, so please don't hesitate to use us as a resource um, uh, as you prepare to move your student to campus. Um, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope that you'll join us. Our next session will be on June 20th, where we have a session for parents of student athletes, uh, where Pat Atwell, our athletic director, and our coaches will be on that Zoom session um, so they can talk to you about how to best support your student athlete. So again, if you're not able to make that, we'll have that recording available on the same, uh, the same spot. A uh, couple Last question, does the meal plan start when athletes move in on August 5th? Their meal plans don't start until the first day of classes. However, the athletics teams provide meals. They're, they will be fed. Um, they will still, you know, like scan into the dining hall, but the team picks up the cost of that. So they will absolutely be, be fed when they're here. We make certain our students don't go hungry. So, all right. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us with questions. We cannot wait. Uh, two months from today is the first move-in uh, for our fall athletes, which is panicking my team a little bit because um, it feels like, oh my gosh, it's going to be here soon. Um, but we, are, we can't wait to have you all here on campus for move-in day. Have a great summer. Please reach out to us if you need anything. Have a good rest of your night. Bye, everybody.